Hello and welcome to Round Table. Poland may well feel it has an important new ally in its fight to get billions of dollars in COVID recovery funds, which the European Union is refusing to hand over. Poland already had a partner in Hungary, but a new government in Italy may also take the EU to task over ways in which the bloc is telling individual countries how to handle domestic affairs. In Poland's case, it's about the impartiality or not of the courts. And the battle doesn't look like it will end soon. Good to have you along. I'm David Foster. Given that the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen this week reiterated her stance that the money won't be handed out, Poland is once again crying foul over what is called the rule of law. The problem we have with the Polish government is that we are deeply convinced that the independence of the judiciary, the judiciary is no more given. This is tough. And therefore, we use our legal tools because in the very end, if, we, you, um, if you support the principle of rule of law, also the institution has to go by the rule of law. Separately, a panel of European judges has threatened to sue the EU if there is any relaxation of this opposition, saying that even conditional approval, which has been given provided Poland falls in line, is going too far. Here are the judges' thoughts. This application seeks the annulment of the Council's decision on the grounds that the rule of law milestones fall short of what is required to ensure the effective judicial protection and disregard the judgments of the Court of Justice of the European Union on the matter. Let us go to the capital of Poland, to Warsaw, and there we see Renata Miankowska, Associate Professor at the University of Warsaw. In Brussels, Witold Jan Bastikowski, former Minister of Foreign Affairs for Poland and a member of the European Parliament at the moment in, in our studio and the Hojak Lecturer of EU Law at University College London. Minister, let me ask you first of all, Poland is being fined a million euros a day for not bringing in these reforms. Have you paid any of that money? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not a part of the government uh, anymore, but uh, if I am uh, asked for advice, I would recommend not to pay <clears throat> because this fine is groundless according to uh, European law. Uh, European institutions institution that does not have anything to do with uh, member state judiciary system and the European institution doesn't have <clears throat> any possibility to interfere in uh, energy security system. No, no, I, I do understand, do understand your point of view and I'll get you to give that in full later, but let me just put this to you. Um, the European Union says Poland's judiciary is not impartial, it has to become impartial. It says all countries that are members of the European Union have to abide by the same rules of law. It says that Poland is not. What is unfair about what they're saying? Because there are no rules of law defined in any legally binding document of the European Union. The rule of law is mentioned as a value in Article 2 of Lisbon Treaty, but there is no definition and there is no model of the judiciary system in member states. We there, therefore, Renata, it doesn't apply. It isn't there. They're not doing anything <laughs> wrong. Well, I'll begin with the fact that uh, some money has already been deducted uh, from Polish uh, funding, uh, but the funding devoted actually to the government. So it means that self-governments or um, civic society institutions we're in direct victims of that, let's say. Secondly, uh, uh, our former Minister of Foreign Affairs is uh, uh, not right about uh, the fact that uh, the European institutions don't have legal instruments to require the rule of law 
or to impose punishments on Poland. First of all, we agreed, I mean, the Polish Prime Minister, Mateusz Marowiecki, we agreed on the mechanism, the rule of law has to be um, uh, uh, fulfilled in all of the member states as a condition sine qua non of distributing uh, next generation EU funding. And this is what Premier Morawiecki, so Prime Minister Morawiecki, actually agreed upon during a European Council meeting. And then it was confirmed a few times. And it was also legalized fully by a ruling of the Court of Justice of the European Union okay. in February. OK, thank you. I, I wonder why this has come to, come to a head. Sorry, I, I have to interrupt because it's only a certain duration, our programme. Um, I wonder why this has come to a head right now. Is it because there are those who fear that the European Commission, the member countries of the EU, may well bend to what Poland is saying because it needs Poland's support vis-à-vis -vis the war in Ukraine and the acceptance of refugees? And Poland has been extremely generous. You don't want to get on the wrong side of that. Obviously not. I mean, Poland obviously supports Ukraine and it also contributes to any decisions and any uh, actions that the European Union has already undertaken to support Ukraine. And, you know, actually the whole quarrel around the rule of law or actually the chaos that the Polish government creates, it's not about supporting Ukraine. These are two very different things. Yeah, it's no, but the fear, the fear may be the that the Commission policy. is about to give in because it needs uh, Poland's support. No, I don't think it's the case because Poland will not take any decisions that would actually anyhow undermine the current, let's say, EU uh, actions towards Ukraine and against Russia. This is hard to imagine. While the European Commission is not blind, nor is it stupid uh, to believe in some cosmetic changes that will actually bring no real rule of law. Okay, no I'm going to bring Andy in. I'm going to bring Andy in here, here in, in the studio. Following on from that thought, is it because the judges panel has set out its desire to sue the European Union if it gives in to any of Poland's demands and therefore it might well be worried that this could happen, even though Ursula von der Leyen is saying it won't? Well, the thing is, uh, the European Commission has been hesitant to take action against Poland and here it's showing lack of political will. It's quite clearly in the EU legislation what the rule of law is and what one should uphold. Now, the judges are taking this decision because they fear that the rule of law might be watered down because of the support that Poland is giving to Ukraine and here we are sort of uh, putting rule of law into negotiation table. And we can also see that with, with Ukraine. That's why they are fearing and they want to make solid legal ground where they can challenge and, and this. And is that actually the case, that the Commission of the EU is actually reluctant because of that? It cannot afford to lose Poland's support on, on Ukraine. Well, the EU was criticised at the beginning for not acting against uh, the war in Ukraine and providing support. And in a way, uh, Poland did save the EU face by giving support at the very beginning. So the European Commission and the President is quite aware of this uh, situation. That could be mm -hmm. one argument why the EU has taken a soft approach in, in Poland. I understand. OK, let me read this out to you. These are some of the recommendations mm -hmm. or the things that the EU is insisting upon. The judicial powers of the country's justice minister and prosecution remain separate and ensure that prosecution and government are independent and that Poland must ensure independent investigations. Has any of that happened? Well, so far it hasn't happened. And we can see that there is no real progress in that. Poland did make those reform prior joining the EU because that was the EU criteria. To join the European Union, you must have an independent judiciary. Now, to their assessment, we can see there is a backsliding. Therefore, they have put that. But let's emphasize those reforms now are conditioned to receiving further funds, right? And some of those funds are frozen and would be frozen unless we but, have... But one of the things that was put out was that this disciplinary panel had to be abolished. That was a panel that sat in judgment on judges, if you like, and, and that has happened. 
Well, no. The, well, there are suggestions from within Poland that this um, disciplinary panel that was disapproved of by the European <clears throat> Union has now been got rid of by Polish authorities. Renata? No, it hasn't happened. I mean, formally, yes, this disciplinary chamber was renamed differently and, uh, yeah, judges, they were suppressed and now some of them had a choice to stay, the others to leave and so on. But the point is that they were replaced by a different type of a chamber of uh, professional responsibility that is actually basically the same and it's also appointed by the politician. OK, well, let, let's president. let's go to the so former foreign minister. Happened. Let me go to you, minister, to you, Vitold, and ask you, the suggestion is, and it's not just from Renata, it's from a, a judge's body, that nothing has changed except the title, therefore no real reforms have been made. What do you say? First of all, I have to clarify that something which is called the mechanism to control rule of law was created in 2020 and was supposed to touch only to the something which is called post-COVID money. And this mechanism is supposed to protect the way of spending money. Uh, to prevent fraud, stealing, and something like this. Commission extended this mechanism to control and to monitor the whole system of the state. So this is a violation, first violation of agreement. Okay, but we're going Second, back to the point you made at the very beginning. My question to you is that um, this disciplinary panel was replaced by something called the Chamber of Professional Responsibility. And the judges' organisation, Justicia, has said, in fact, nothing has changed. There are still people at the Supreme Court building who are going to pass judgments who were appointed by the politicians. And it's unduly influenced by legislative and executive powers. In other words, the government and the parliament is telling the courts what it can and cannot do. Nothing seems to have changed, even though Poland might say it has. Exactly. Just like it happens in every or each member state of the European Union. In every country, politicians or parliaments are selecting or choosing the highest uh, members of the highest court uh, tribunals. Everywhere is this. And we cannot be the hostage of few judges who are unsatisfied with this contemporary government. This is un unheard of that few judges can decide about the political system of the whole country. This battle is not about clarity and purity, purity of the judicial system. This is an ideological battle of the uh, dominated uh, ideological liberal left uh, politicians in the Western Europe against the conservative government in Poland, in Hungary, in Slovenia, in Czechia. Now will be a battle with Sweden and uh, tomorrow with Italy. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about Italy in just a moment, but I want to bring Andy back in here and read out a couple of the other things that the European Union has directed towards Poland. Um, restore immunity for judges. Stop the introduction of so-called impunity clauses that effectively let politicians, they say, get off scot-free. And allow the country's public service media to be more independent. Which of those is the most contentious for the government? Is it the fact that the media would be outspoken? in its criticism of it? Is it the impunity for its own members because they might be prosecuted if that law was lifted? Which is it? Well, they are interlinked, right? Because you can't have one or the other. The impunity is very important because you need to be able to help people accountable. And if that clause is being put, then eventually you let them go unaccountable. Then the part on the media, of course, we have, we have had discussion over the years in terms of the role of the media and what the media can provide. But it's quite important that we have an independent media and the media can shed light into some of the power abuse. And if we restrict and limit those, then it becomes very challenging. And the EU at the moment is proposing also a new directive, which uh, would be 
able to support more journalists, especially when it comes to lawsuits against them, and that is to kind of restore uh, the balance uh, of power. But if you weaken these accountability tools, then you essentially uh, let the government do whatever they want. I'll come back to you in just a moment and ask you about how some people might see a way of ending this impasse. But Minister Vitold, I want to come to you and ask about the independence of the media. Is it in any way independent? We have a media which belong to the United States. We have a media which belong to Germany. We have media which belong to Switzerland. Do you think they depend on the Polish government? No, they, they are totally dependent because we, the, we cannot interfere in the property uh, principle of these, uh, of these owners. So what else you can uh, ask from the government? I don't know. Let's the throw market, that one to Renata the, because uh, here we have the, the, the former the media, minister. One second. Here we have the former media all... saying the media is independent because it's got foreign ownership and the government cannot interfere. Renata? Well, first of all, minister forgot about the Polish national media that is fully dependent, even according to the bodies that are dependent on the government. Even they state that the public media is dependent on the government. Secondly, Yes, indeed, uh, let's say TVN that is owned by the Americans indeed might be considered independent and is. However, there were numerous efforts to limit this independence or to even suppress the uh, possibility to broadcast in Poland. But coming back to what Minister said about the independence of uh, judges and of what actually has been going on the, in the EU, it's really not an attack on conservatists around the European Union, in particular in, um, I don't know, Eastern and uh, Middle Europe. Well, Ursula von der Leyen, she's conservative herself, and we've got EPP in the European Parliament and so on. I think that conservative uh, forces and powers actually dominate in the European Union. The point is that uh, judicial independence can be provided only, only if it's not if they are not politicized. And European Tribunal of Human Rights, for example, confirmed that in Poland there are serious offenses against judges made by the politicians and by those politicized bodies. If the Court of Human Rights states that and issues ruling which protect the Polish judges, you can't say that it's an attack of the European Union against the Okay, Polish let's government. see where we go from here. Let's see, because I don't want this to become he said, <clears throat> she said. Um, Minister, Vito, let me ask you this one. You mentioned a number of countries that might be holding a similar position to Poland's, not necessarily in terms of the confrontation um, that Poland is having with the European Union, similar lines to Hungary, but in terms of its opposition to certain policies. Uh, you talked of potentially Italy, and I wonder whether you think such a, a heavyweight country, such a, a large industrial member of the European Union would be able to do things with the EU that you, Poland, perhaps can't do, that it would be a very important ally to have? Well, we used to have a different uh, behaviour of big countries like Germany or France in terms of the budget, uh, budgetary policy and others. And uh, we, we had the situation of double standards from a uh, uh, chief of the commission when we uh, when we ask him why uh, France is for instance not disciplined in budgetary issues he uh, openly answered but what about this Italy is now France because this is France we will see just before the uh, the Sunday we have a uh, uh, clear intervention of Ursula von der Leyen. She was warning uh, that uh, in terms of the bad uh, decision, bad choice, uh, she will implement the same instrument to discipline Italy as is discipline discipline right now Poland. And, and does does that does that mean so, that does that mean the dice are now falling in your favour? 
to have such a heavyweight as Italy perhaps in the same boat. And Andy, I'll come to you on that one in just a second after Vito, Minister, you, you, you've given your response. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We have to wait and, uh, and see what is going to behave of the Commission. Once again, let me straight, uh, be straight that the Commission is violating uh, European law. The whole proce process of uh, dealing with Poland is not based on any legally binding document of the European... OK, well, but, 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 but there's disagreement. There's disagreement on this panel about that. We have an expert in, in, in law here. When it comes to having Italy on side, do you think, even though the, the Commission says it's not doing anything wrong, it's simply trying to pull Poland in line with existing laws, that it might be more difficult for it to do so. Should a right-wing government in Italy, which is anti-European Union to some extent, um, start to be difficult as well? Well, first of all, we have to see how that's going to go, because Italy in the last 30 years, every year changes the government. So we might want to see how long this government might last. But the minister earlier mentioned the uh, mechanism, the conditionality mechanism that the EU has developed. And the mechanism is quite clear because it's based on European treaties where you have to be transparent in terms of the money from EU comes and how you spend it. And if you do not align with the rules of the EU, especially with the rule of law, the values and so forth, then those uh, monies will not be received to you and then they could be essential penalties. So but, I but that, see that, that, that is a Mexican standoff, isn't it? Poland says it's not breaking the law. EU says it is breaking the law. Neither side is going to give unless. Unless what? Well, unless a compromise comes. But then the, what the EU standards is saying is that we should not compromise the rule of law. And I'm wondering so, if it's more likely there will be a compromise, a deal, if you like, backroom, diplomatic whispers, dark corridors, smoke-filled rooms, if Italy puts the pressure on as well? That could likely happen, but then are we going to have a new arrangement? Because at the moment, the arrangement, when we talk about the European Union, is at such. So are we going to have a new treaty? And if the new treaty comes, then perhaps have to rewrite the rules of how the European Union works. Okay. At the moment, how the rules work is that Poland has to align with uh, the European values. Okay, so Renata, is the European Union simply waiting, in your opinion, for the, the government in Poland to fall and for conditions to change? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the Polish government has to stick to the milestones that are uh, put quite clearly in the contract between the Poland, um, uh, the Polish government and the European Union. So there in the agreement, it's quite clear. It hasn't happened yet on the Polish side. So the Polish side is now coming up with uh, different ideas of how to overcome all those uh, requirements, how to pretend that something has been going on. But in fact, nothing happens to improve. I would say the opposite. It goes actually the wrong direction to, uh, to uh, decline, actually, uh, with the rule but, of but, but law. But surely the and point honestly, here, if I may, yeah. surely the point here is that OK, you have Poland, you have Hungary, now you have the other countries that the minister has mentioned. You may well have Italy. If there is a growing consensus among mm -hmm. countries which have appointed what, if you like, ultra-conservative or right-wing governments that the EU is acting out of order, then what does the EU do? It can't wait for them all to fall over, can it? No, but... It Let's not speak about that, because uh, uh, Italy, for the moment, it hasn't supported Poland in breaking the rule of law. It's a very different thing. They have a different government. I mean, they have obviously a government I don't like as a Democrat, because uh, they quite clearly actually... No, but, but that's irrelevant. I, I, jolly nice to hear your to, opinion, to, but, to but, but that doesn't matter to this discussion. They are pro-Russian, they are pro-Putin. Pro Can you imagine that Poland now, in order to fight with the European Union, that 90% of the Poles support, that they will now have a big alliance with people who have just declared Vladimir Putin, I don't know, one of their, let's say, um, uh, allies. Okay, I get it, I get it. I'm going to give the minister a chance to sort of wrap this up because we've got about two minutes left. Uh, they're just waiting for you, not you personally, but for you and your government to be history. 
then you won't have to. Then you won't be able to cause them any more trouble. Yes, you are absolutely right. They are trying to out outweigh us. We have a democratically elected government with legitimacy to rule and modernize and reform the country according to our constitution, according to our constitutional tribunal. And according to the international, uh, according to the European law, uh, there is no right of the other institution to interfere and to dictate how we are supposed to uh, create a judicial system. This is our own domestic prerogative. Dot. Okay, thank you for watching this edition of Roundtable. I'm David Foster. We hope to have your company next time. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>